If you zoomed into the fabric of reality, what would you see at the deepest level? A new exciting idea in physics called non-commutative geometry predicts that physical reality is made up of just three layers, and that space itself doesn't work quite as we thought it did. But first, you have some zooming in to do. For starters, you'll find that all materials consist of atoms, which in turn consist of smaller particles, electrons that circle the atomic nucleus, which is made up of protons and neutrons, and these in turn consist of quarks and gluons. You could ask two questions about this. One, is that all there is? And two, so what are these particles made of? So is this all? Not at all. Nature has a whole particle zoo for those who care to investigate. Neutrinos, muons, positrons, charm quarks, strange quarks, vector bosons and, of course, the Higgs particle to name but a few. But most of these particles aren't stable. Pretty soon after they are created, in a particle accelerator for instance, they will fall apart into other lighter particles, again and again, until only the stable particles are left. But this splitting into pieces does have some rules. You won't find just any old particle turning into any other particle. Which can turn into what depends on the interactions between the particles. Take for instance this muon. It can take part in a weak interaction. That means it can turn into a muon neutrino and a W vector boson, which in turn could transform into an electron and a neutrino, both of which are stable. So that's the weak interaction. As you'd probably expect, there is also a strong interaction. Quarks and gluons in atomic nuclei take part in that one. And then there's the electromagnetic interaction, which these two electrons take part in. It means that they eject or absorb a photon. This interaction makes these two electrons, both carrying a negative electric charge, push each other away. In other words, there is a force between them. This is why interactions can also be called forces. In this case, the photon is the force particle of the electromagnetic force. Similarly, the W boson is the force particle of the weak force, and the gluon is the strong force particle. For your convenience, we've gathered all particles and interactions slash forces in this neat table, called the Standard Model, which seemed complete in 2012 with the discovery of the Higgs boson. But questions remain, like, this is really pretty complicated, shouldn't nature at its deepest level be a bit simpler? Which brings us to question number two. What do these particles consist of? Actually, particles are not made out of embroidered felt, but out of quantum fields. These fields are spread through space like a rolling hillscape. The higher the hill, the greater the chance that you will find a particle at exactly that spot. But what about all the different particles? If every particle has its own private quantum field, you'd need quite a stack of fields. On the other hand, some particles look suspiciously alike. For instance, this muon neutrino resembles a muon in some respects. Yes, there is a difference. The neutrino does not take part in the electromagnetic interaction, while the muon does. But as far as weak interaction is concerned, however, they're pretty much interchangeable. So for quantum bookkeeping purposes, it'll save you a lot of trouble if, instead of a muon field and a neutrino field, you just use one field, with a nifty extra bit. This field would have an internal ruler throughout. The ruler will tell you what particle we're talking about, a muon or a neutrino. Or a mix. One of the odd properties of quantum mechanics is that you can also go halfway. Just as Schrodinger's famous cat can be part dead, part alive, a particle can be half muon, half neutrino, as this ruler shows us. If this all smells a bit like a bookkeeping gimmick, that's because it is. But, as in real life, bookkeeping gimmicks have a way of meddling with reality. As it turns out, the internal rulers, also known as internal dimensions, give rise to the interactions or forces in a very natural and mathematically beautiful way. The idea is that, on the outside, physics is independent of what the ruler indicates at any point. This is called the gauge principle. If you insist on this gauge principle, the weak interaction just pops up magically in your equations as a kind of physics birthday present, along with the W force particle. And it's not just the weak interaction that has an internal ruler. The electromagnetic interaction and the strong interaction too have internal dimensions. Applied to these, the gauge principle gives you two more forces, 
and their force particles, all essentially for free. And even that's not all. Eventually, if you keep insisting on the gauge principle, the mathematics will give you the Higgs boson. So it seems that we have to take these internal dimensions seriously. Could there be more than just bookkeeping tricks? Remarkably, they can be explained by a new idea in physics, non-commutative geometry, which purports that the way the three space dimensions work is subtly different from what we always thought. Take two regular numbers, say 2 and 6, and multiply them. 2 times 6 is 12, which is the same as 6 times 2. The order of the numbers doesn't matter when you multiply. Or, as a mathematician would say, multiplication of natural numbers is commutative. Another example. Take these two lines that fuse into one. It doesn't matter if you switch the order, the result is the same. But there are also non-commutative mathematical operations where the order does matter. Take for instance these two ribbons fusing together. If you do it this way, the result is very different when you change the starting order. This is a non-commutative operation. When we think about a dimension, a length or a height or a width, we mere mortals think of ordinary real numbers, which you can multiply either way. But imagine space dimensions somehow don't commute. Yes, doing that may very well cause your brain to hurt, but if you just keep the maths straight, this assumption leads automatically to these mysterious internal dimensions, and, by implication, to everything that follows according to the gauge principle, the three forces, their force particles, and the Higgs particle. It would mean that deep down, only three quantum fields exist, one for the weak interaction, one for the strong interaction, and one for the electromagnetic interaction, but they live in a non-commutative space. More concretely, it would also mean that there must be another unknown particle, the sigma particle. It's a bit annoying that this sigma particle is far too heavy to be detected in modern particle accelerators, like the Large Hadron Collider, but who knows, its existence might be proved in another, more indirect way. Theoretical physicists and mathematicians are busy working out the consequences and testable predictions of this new particle model as we speak, like the researchers at the Mathematical Physics Department at Radboud University, for instance. If the non-commutative three-layer model is correct, it turns out that our trusty old three-dimensional space doesn't work quite the way we thought it did. Deep, deep down, nature is more subtle, but also simpler than we have always understood it to be.